Welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We watched, along with hundreds of millions of people around the world probably, uh, the last debate between President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. The results of that debate are being formulated and reviewed, but we're going to jump in this morning and do it ourselves. We have a very special guest to analyze it with us. Daniel Greenfeld is joining us. He's the Shulman Fellow at the David Horowitz Freedom Center. He is a political commentator, an expert on all things politics, and we're very happy to have him with us today. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you so much for having me back. Let's talk about the issue that came out a few days ago, and contrary to moderator Kristen Welker's um, attempt to sideline it. It became a very repeated discussion point last night, and that is the biggest scandal in American political history, in my opinion, which is the Hunter Biden laptop. Daniel, how bad is the news on that computer and why? Well, the news just keeps getting worse and worse, and it's having a ripple effect, which is that you have uh, former Hunter Biden associates now kind of coming out of the woodwork, um, to provide new information. So beyond the laptop, which is a mother load, uh, you have uh, two former business partners. Tony Boblinski is the more famous one because of his press conference. And you've got other caches of emails and messages that are coming forward. All this is really bad news for Hunter Biden. Well, his two partners in previous deals are now both convicted felons One's in prison, uh, Bevan Cooney. They just moved him, I believe, yesterday, Daniel, to a secret prison location to keep him alive. And the other one is Devin Archer, who's awaiting sentencing. Um, that was a previous scheme involving Native American tribes and a funding thing that was a big fraud. Is that a story that matters? Of course it matters. Uh, this really just highlights Hunter Biden's record, um, and Hunter Biden's record, as we're seeing, is increasingly Joe Biden's record. Uh, the big question, obviously, has been, to what extent does Hunter Biden affect Joe Biden? To what extent can the Democrats just say, well, this is the troubled son, uh, his brother died, uh, he's obviously got addiction issues, uh, his family had suffered all sorts of traumas, and Joe Biden was just standing by his son, which is really the Democrat talking point. Uh, but increasingly, you're building connections to Joe Biden, which is what the Bobinski press conference did. Uh, as you're seeing more and more information released, and they're pivoting on, well, Joe Biden was a private citizen some of the time. There's no actual evidence that he used his political authority to further his business interests. So this is already a fallback. They're actually trying to manage the scandal, and the scandal is making further inroads. Now, the material itself is obviously devastating because we've got two threads here. We've got one, we've got the financial stuff, which you've mentioned. Two, we've got the sexual stuff, which you briefly touched on. And as far as just the actual visceral images go, uh, the drug use, the alleged um, uh, involvement of underage girls is obviously going to be seriously problematic on a very public level because communicating to the public something like Burisma, why this matters, uh, why photos uh, with Kazakh oligarchs matter, why a company in China matters. Uh, that can be kind of tricky, but the visceral scandal stuff, that's what the media is really afraid of. This is why they aggressively blocked the original New York Post story. Well, let's, let's touch first on what happened uh, yesterday and the day before. Hunter's uh, more recent partner, the fellow that has gone public now, has, is turning over his cell phones, I understand, today to the FBI, uh, was scheduled to be interviewed by the Senate Homeland Security Committee, uh, Ron Johnson's committee, the Republican Senator from Wisconsin. That was delayed because he is now with the FBI. Tell us what this guy talked about. So Tony Bobinski is pretty crucial because he actually serves as a kind of interface between uh, not only the uh, Chinese investors, uh, and this is a pretty damaging scandal because Ukraine to a lot of Americans is obscure, Kazakhstan is obscure, China is very much the enemy, and you've got uh, Chinese communist oligarchs involved in this. But the second part is really Tony Bubinsky claims that he can substantiate connections between Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, and that is very much the kill shot as far as an election is concerned. Uh, so you've got him coming forward and saying uh, a number of things. Uh, first of all, that uh, Joe Biden was indeed the big guy, uh, in quotes, the big guy who was actually the source of 
at least some of the payments. So and by the way, if I, if I can interrupt for a second, Trump mentioned that three or four times, Daniel, and said, are you the big guy? Is that you? Are you the big man? And Biden just stared into the camera and didn't say a word. Yeah. So another thing when it comes to the debate are, and for that matter, Biden's comments before and after is just what he's denying and what he's not denying. Uh, despite everything, they're not denying that the laptop was theirs. They're not denying the uh, authenticity of the messages themselves. They're denying some of the implications of it, even though the implications are obviously clearly true. For example, um, claiming that uh, Hunter Biden never profited from China, obviously absurd, that he never personally took any foreign money, again, absurd. Uh, but he's not actually denying the specifics of it, which is itself an admission. So uh, the the bottom line is here that this is true. The problem, though, with uh, some of the talking points, like the big guys, the media has blocked so many people from realizing this. And people who are listening to this are likely very well aware of what the big guy refers to. So many people at the debate are not. And this is really the challenge. The question is, to what extent can the public be made aware of the details of the scandal? Um, but the, as far as the, on the evidentiary level, there's definite progress here. Connections are being made. Um, when the Senate actual hearing happens, and that should provide a good deal of important information. And it's going to be harder and harder to ignore because initially it was just a near post story. You could block it. The more it spreads, the more the media has to engage with it, the harder it becomes to contain. Well, let's talk about the Senate for a second. You touched on it a minute ago. Ron Johnson, who is the chairman of the Senate Homeland Security Committee, his committee released an 87-page report raising concerns about the Biden family. Now, Senator Johnson has accused Hunter Biden and Joe Biden's brothers of using their last name to make millions in the following shady deals. The $4.2 million that Hunter got from Burisma, the $3.5 million that Hunter Biden got from the former wife of the now deceased mayor of Moscow. Johnson has said that this is an intricate web of international financial connections, money coming in and out, cash going back and forth between Hunter and his Chinese national contacts in the Ukraine, in, um, in Russia, and obviously in China. Uh, he says it's very troubling. Is, is that committee going to be able to make enough noise to move the vote? So we've already seen a certain amount of action in this regard. For example, Tony Bobinski came forward in large part because of the Johnson report that you just mentioned. Uh, the Johnson report actually told him things he did not know. He was, he'd been picked by Hunter Biden as the CEO of Sinohawk. Um, but the report actually showed him that money was going to Hunter Biden. It was going to the Bidens that he was not even aware of and that he himself had been cheated as a result. And obviously, I think he's reasonably concerned about being the patsy or the fall guy. But really, he's said that the report prompted him to come forward. So you've got multiple elements coming forward. You've got you pull on different strings and more stuff tumbles out. So you've got Tony Bobinski coming forward in response to the report, which was impartially. Um, you've got the uh, Mac shop that's actually bringing material out there. And each time you add more material, more material now begins to accumulate because more people start coming forward. And that is itself a kind of a rock rolling down the cliff. Uh, as it gathers speed, as it gathers speed, as it gathers speed, more material keeps coming out because there's just so much squeeze out there. And you mentioned early on, Hunter Biden has a track record of, let's say, um, problematic business partners. A whole bunch of these people are not particularly reliable. The Bidens are not very good at picking people who are going to stay quiet, unlike the Clintons. And that's a huge difference. Well, there, let me just touch on, on one of those people. Um, Peter Schweitzer at Breitbart explained that he got 20, get this, 26,000 emails from Mr. Cooney, uh, who is right now in prison, uh, convicted of a fraud and a, a bunch of accounts, money laundering and blah, 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 Hunter Biden's partner. Um, what do the emails show? 26,000 of them detailing these Hunter Biden deals. What do they show? Yeah, Peter Schweitzer is a fantastic investigator. And as you just mentioned, as an aside, uh, the FBI's basis for subpoenaing the Hunter Biden laptop seemed to be money laundering. So money laundering is very much at the center of this. If there are any charges coming out of this, it would probably be, begin with wire fraud. Now, we don't have everything yet, but we're getting a bigger and bigger picture of the scope of these deals. 
Now, the media is denying all this, but actually it would have been reporting this back during the primaries. Uh, everybody knew uh, really that Hunter Biden had been doing some very shady things. Uh, there had been no direct connections to Joe Biden. Uh, the emails are not in and of themselves a smoking gun, uh, but they provide more and more of a basis for um, building these connections. Now, we know that uh, Joe Biden or the people around him were very um, concerned about being connected to this directly, which is why they spoke in code. We've seen, for example, the big guy, we've seen other text messages which specifically state, uh, don't mention Joe Biden unless you're face-to-face -face in the room, which means don't create a paper trail. Now, if you're gonna avoid creating a paper trail, uh, there's just one reason for that, which is that you're doing something that is basically illegal or so deeply problematic that you would not actually have a career after that. So we already know, first of all, that emails are going to be uh, limited use in making that direct connection, but the people coming forward themselves can testify to that uh, because it's function very much like the mafia. You don't say certain things. You make certain indirect arrangements, you set up shell companies, which is what we're seeing, but you don't actually come forward and say, this is what Joe wants. Instead, you make indirect references, the chairman, the big guy, um, but as you actually get more eyewitnesses, as you get more people who are involved in this, those people can actually testify to it. So the news, like you said, is trickling out every day and it's like bad news on top of bad news and two hours later, there's another wheelbarrow full of bad news. Is it enough to move the outcome of the election into Trump's favor? Currently, this is what it's really coming down to. Uh, can it accumulate enough to break this media dam? Now, the media dam itself is not as concerning as the social media dam because for four years, uh, big tech and the media have been planning to how to deal with another repetition of the same scenario. Because the big Democrat autopsy after 2016 wasn't that they lost because of messaging. It wasn't that they lost because they didn't campaign in Wisconsin or all that. Uh, their messaging is that they lost because Hillary's emails were reported on by the media and that social media, especially Facebook, allowed material damaging to Hillary Clinton to thrive on there and win so much engagement. So everything they've done has been preparing for this. The moment uh, the first post story broke, they pushed the big red button that they had and they began blocking it. Now blocking, uh, you can only block so much, you can only throttle so much, you can only suppress so much. And so you've got this accumulating water rising, rising higher and higher, and you've got this dam that they've built and the dam is training, it's under pressure. And the more you actually try to bulk up the dam, uh, the more people are wondering what is going on here? What are we talking about? Now the same media that won't talk about the stuff, will talk about Mitch McConnell's hands. They're desperately going for distractions. We're going with, is, are Mitch McConnell's bruised hands, discolored hands, evidence that he has a health problem? Uh, let's talk about this scene with Giuliani in the Borat uh, clip. But they're trying to find distractions to avoid talking about the real issue. And as this continues to escalate, you've got a Senate hearing, um, you've got FBI involvement, it becomes impossible to stop. So, you've so got, what's the answer? Uh, the answer is that, I mean, I can't predict the future, obviously, and this election is strange enough that nobody can predict what's going to happen. But I think the media is not going to succeed in continuing to block it. Their attempts to block it actually are only making things worse. If they'd actually just gotten it out of the way and disposed of it, uh, they would be in a better position. Right now, uh, this is just kind of accumulating behind an iron curtain and it's spilling out, which is worse for them. But for a lot of the public, um, the scandal itself is not going to be the determinant. Uh, for so many people, really, it's the economy, it's the coronavirus itself that they're going to be voting on. Um, the Biden scandal is definitely going to be damaging because the Democrats have been running on the character. They've been running on, look at Biden, he's a very decent man. Ignore all the videos and pictures of him groping women. Uh, he is the embodiment of decency. He can make the country go back to normal. We won't have any of this crazy stuff anymore. No more riots, no more uh, constant media controversies. Things will be quiet, they'll be normal. And this scandal communicates uh, things, the crazy stuff is just getting started. If you vote for Biden, the insanity is just beginning. Wow, well, we'll know in two weeks, or actually less than two weeks. Daniel, thanks for coming on today. And thank you, our viewers, for tuning in on this and all of our shows. Remember, if you haven't done it yet, you can subscribe to ATP and get all of our content absolutely for free on your cell phone by simply texting the word TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and sending it to 88202, push send. You'll be automatically subscribed. We won't charge you for anything that comes to you, and you'll get it twice a week right on your cell phone. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.